three, two, one. Here we go. Welcome to Lighthouse Live with Jordan Devitt, the show where we give God the glory from this generation to the next. And now to your host, Jordan Devitt. I want to talk to two different people here today. One is someone who doesn't know the Lord. And I want to convince you why walking with Jesus makes our life so much better. And then two is people who are already walking with God. And I want to bring a fresh breath of encouragement on how you made the right decision. So my title today is Life with Jesus is Better. And I want to start off by explaining what it means to actually not follow the Lord. Well, Romans 3.23 says this, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sin in the most literal sense, from the Greek word hamartia, means missing the mark. The mark of God, you may say, well, what is the mark, Jordan? The mark is perfection. So every person in the whole world missed being perfect. We're not perfect. We're, we're fallen humans. We fail to follow God's word, you know. And because of that, we missed the mark. We missed perfection. Therefore, God can't be with us. You know, the Bible says that sin separates us from God. And that God is holy. Therefore, we have to be holy. So because of that, we can't be with God uh, when we have sin and when we've missed that mark. And because of that, we are distanced from God and we've fallen from God. So walking away from God is, in a sense, just in our nature um, to be fallen and, and not to be able to be with him. Ever since Adam and Eve, we basically can't be with God. So let's explain, though, what that really begins to look like um, progressing. In Matthew 16, 24, it says that, for us to actually believe, it says this, that then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Following God is not about being a good person, per se. Following God isn't about believing that there could be a God. Following God means that we literally believe wholeheartedly that he died on a cross for us. He bore our sins on the cross and we can only be with God because of him. The Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus. So knowing this, right, knowing that it is God alone helps us to realize we are not good, right? That it is God. Um, and so the first thing that we must do is acknowledge that we've missed the mark and it's only through Jesus that we're saved. As humans, oftentimes we get this notion that, you know, we're not bad people. And again, this is what people who are, aren't following Jesus would, would, you know, think. You know, and I hope if you are following Jesus and you think this, I, I want to let you know that that's a wrong uh, ideology, that we're not bad people. Maybe because you've seen nice people around you, or maybe because you've uh, had good people in your life. And I understand that. But what I'm saying is, in our nature, it is to be bad. In our nature, it's, it's for us to walk away from the Lord, right? And we 
without Jesus would just be absolutely in devastation. Okay? Now, if you don't believe me, let me give you some scripture. Galatians 5, 19 through 21 says this, The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So now you can see that God says us alone isn't good. Humans equal bad without Christ. I want you to say that back to me. Humans equal bad without Christ. Now, even if you've seen good people, I want you to know that, yes, you could be a nice citizen, but it doesn't mean that it's not in you to be bad, if you understand what I'm saying. And it doesn't mean that that is good enough to be what God wants. Like I said, what God wants is perfection. So even if that person is good most of the time, that's not good enough. It, it's just not. And so it's okay because Jesus, right? It's okay that we're not perfect because of Jesus. So anyone who does not accept that, they are not able to walk in what God has for them. And so deep down inside of us, it's, 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 it's written for us to be missing the mark or sinners. Deep down inside of us, it is to be motivated by the lusts of this world. And as good as a person may seem, if sin really grabs a hold of them, then we'll see that they are bound to destruction. And sin can grow in us. And so what that really means is that someone can start off as, again, you know, having maybe better moral compass inside of them, but as they progress, finding that they're not really perfect, that they're not really all that they can be, and it's because they don't have Christ, right? So James 1.15 says this, Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death, okay? So sin can start off, you know, as, hey, this person's, you know, let's say, not sinning a ton, you know, in their day-to-day -day life or whatever. But at the end of the day, if sin begins to fester in us, it produces death, both spiritually and physically, okay? So I hope what you got from this first point is this. Let me just reiterate to make this very clear. Humans are bad without Christ. If we don't accept Christ, then that means that we miss the mark. The mark of what? Perfection. God is the only one who's perfect. So therefore, the only way that we can actually stand before a perfect God is through Jesus Christ. Okay? So if anyone thinks they're good, they're bad. They're not good. None of us are good except Christ. Except in Christ. Okay? Now, you get that. The second thing is, this, so then why is it so difficult for us to choose uh, in times for people? Why is it, like, so difficult as humans to say, man, like, God is the way, right? God is, is, is what I need. Like, I want to have a relationship with God. Why is there so much of a battle? Well, we know that there's a, both a spiritual um, world and a, a devil who doesn't want us to live with God. He hates us, he hates God, and he doesn't want us to live with God. And so because of that, the enemy pushes the motive of that there's more out there for us than living with God. Such as, there's more out there, um, there's, there's better relationships that are outside of Christ for us. Um, such as, you know, a better high or a better drunk or a better, uh, you know, whatever thing out there that would suffice our flesh. And he uses that against humans so that 
they don't walk with the Lord and that they end up finding themselves being basically in situations that they are broken. So where did this happen first? And I think this is a good basis for us to recognize that, you know, where this has happened and how it, it, it continuously happens to humans. In Genesis 3, 4 through 7, it says that you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and ate it. And the eyes of both them were open, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So, knowing that, we can see what did the enemy tempt them with then? The enemy tempted them with, again, there's more. You know, you, if you t take this fruit, your eyes will be open to more. When they already had everything that they, they needed and everything that God wanted them to have. And it wasn't like they were actually missing out on anything at all. But Satan used FOMO, which is fear of missing out on something else that was quote-unquote better. There, we know there was nothing better for them. There was nothing that they needed more than what they already had. God gave them everything. Food, he gave them peace. There was, there was, there was, there was uh, everything they needed. There was no, no fallen state. No sin had, had been in the world at that particular point. But then they fell. And for me, I want you to know that I think this is where it comes into play. Whatever thing that we would do that's contrary to the word of God, that very thing, we will find out very quickly, will not satisfy us. That very thing will not suffice us. That very thing will not please us. As good as it looks, as tempting as it may seem, it's not worth it. I have never seen someone who really falls into sin and who continuously walks in it say, I'm glad I did that. Why? Because sin is not satisfying um, forever. Now, of course, you know, the Bible actually does say that sin has a season of pleasure to it, right? So that's kind of how it gets you. You know, I always say when it, when it comes to addictions and stuff, they get you in, in things that, of this world. It gets you because it, you know, it probably feels good in, in the beginning. Like, that's just the reality of it. But then as that thing festers, like I said before, it brings death. So then you see that there's, there's death even just in so many things of our life, death in our relationships, death in our, our health, death, death in, in so many different areas, and we don't want to be there. I remember watching a, um, a, a man of God who fell, destroyed his family, committing adultery, and uh, he was speaking in a documentary, and, and what he said was so impacting, and he said, Trust me, you don't want to be where I'm at. And you could see it in the man's eyes. You could see it in the man's face. You could see it radiating out of him that he messed up. And whatever that thing was that he was trying to have, get, or do was not worth uh, destroying his life, his family, and his career. And I want you to know the same thing today, that whatever it is that you're feeling fear of missing out on, whatever it is, you can name it, I don't know, that thing is not better than Jesus. It's just not. It, it, it really isn't. And so now because I've, I've explained, first off, what it means to not walk with Jesus and how we're bad people uh, at the core of us and how... Sometimes what we think is good is really bad. 
Now let's talk about why is walking with Jesus better. So why is walking with Jesus better than anything? Well, let's talk about it. This is the, the beauty. This is the good news, as I would say. You get to have a relationship with Christ. As I said earlier, the enemy always wants you to think, oh, you know, if you do this, you know, it'll be better. Well, no, it's not going to be better. It's going to make your life worse, walking outside of God's word and his will. It's, 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 it's going to make things sit uh, messy in your life, chaotic, confused. You're going to find a lot of situations and scenarios that you probably don't want to be in. Um, and on the contrary, on the other end, right, when you walk in God's word, you receive the covenantal promises, the blessings that he has, the provision that he has, and all the things that Jesus gives us in walking a relationship with him. So let's just uh, start to say some of them. So everything good comes from God. James 1.17 says this, Every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Here's a list of some of the awesome things that God will do in your life for you as you walk in covenant with him. And I want to remind you, what is the reason that God died on the cross? Jesus died on the cross to reconcile us back to God, to have a relationship with mankind. Really, that's really it. To have a relationship with mankind and to redeem and restore that relationship with mankind. That's it. That's the, the premises of the gospel, that God died because there was a, we couldn't hit that mark. We, we couldn't be perfect so that we could have that relationship once again with the Lord Jesus. So provisions for our life. Matthew 6, 31 through 33, it says this. Do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So, of course, every one of us, it's not an impure thing to say, I want to be able to pay my bills. <laughs> no, God wants you to pay your bills. It's not an impure thing to say, I want to have a car that works. It's, it's not. It's, God wants you to have a car that works. It's not an impure thing to say, I want to be able to eat every meal. God wants you to eat every meal. It's not an impure thing to say, I want to have clothes that are clean and nice, that don't smell like trash. God wants you to have that. God wants to provide for us, and that's part of what he does as our good father who's in heaven. Secondly, God wants us to have peace. You know, we went out evangelizing a few weeks ago with the evangelism team, and the entire time people were asking me, can you pray for peace for me? Can you pray for peace for me? Can you pray for peace for me? Of course I can, right? And I prayed for them. The enemy doesn't give peace. brings chaos. He doesn't. So peace comes from the Lord. Isaiah 6, 26 and 3. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Health comes from God. Jeremiah 30 and 17. But I will restore to you health. Heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Being seen being known, being heard. Psalm 8 and 4, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? I'm sure that at some point in your life you've probably separated your career from God or, or separated things from God, but you know that God is in the mix of those things. As a matter of fact, he wants to be in the mix of those things if he's not um, from our end. God wants us to be able to have a whole family. God wants us to be able to have success in our job. God wants us to be able to uh, you know, pursue our, our, our dreams and our visions, our goals, our ambitions in a healthy way. And so these things are actually from the Lord. And we may think that they're just maybe random or chance before, but I want you to know that these things are from God and that God wants you to have them. Not that God's like, oh, well, you know. No, God is a good God. God is actually... A, a loving God and a very um, inclined to be there for us, God. And so all these things are from God. It's from the Lord. It's not from the world. It's not from the enemy. It's not from our flesh. It's from God. 
And God wants you to have it. And so, remembering all of this, that at the end of the day, life with Jesus is better than anything that you can think of in this world. And you want to have a relationship with God. If you already do, continuously learning the depths of what God actually wants that relationship to mold into and, and, and blossom into. And these are the things that he wants them to blossom into. And it's a wonderful thing. Really, it really is. I'm saying that sincerely. Now, I want to talk again and analyze some of the things. You know, I'm kind of going back and forth here on, on what it looks like as a believer and a non-believer, a follower of Jesus and non-follower of Jesus. So let's talk about, um, in a sense, the benefits. I'm going to say benefits, but you know what I mean. The, the benefits of being a believer. Um, Matthew 5.45 says this, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends on the righteous, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. So one of the things that I love so much that we get to do as believers is you're allowed to have a bad day um, and lean into God. And this is so amazing. This should be a breath of fresh air. So look at it like this. Rain, essentially, we understand is, you know, the harshness of life hitting you. So Rain's going to come on the believer. Rain's going to come on the unbeliever. Bad things are going to happen to both, right? People are going to be passing away in families. People are going to get sick. People are going to, um, you know, see different, you know, they're going to see different things happen, right? That, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, storms are going to hit, right? And we have to be able to brace ourselves for that. But what, I'm, what I think is so imperative is that we see that the difference. Most of the time, what ends up happening to people who are unbelievers and storms hit their life is they scream and scream and scream for help, and no one can carry the weight of the burden of their situation. Why? Humans weren't meant to, to, bear, to bear that burden. I've seen so many people who they're reaching for help. And what they're reaching for is not humans' help. Humans can't help them in this situation. They don't know how to do it themselves. They need the hand and the, and the, the provision of God. And it's unfortunate to me seeing people who they, they are wanting to be with the Lord and crying out, but they have no one there. So then they turn to substance abuse and, and different um, things that are trying to suffice what is taking place in their life, the tragedies, the harshness. With God, it's totally different. You know, the Bible says that in our weaknesses, God is made strong. So you're allowed to say, God, I'm doing terrible today. You're allowed to say, God, I am weak. You're allowed to say, God, I can't do it. Because in all those situations, he says, I can do all things through you. He says that in my weakness, or in your weakness, I'm strong. He says these things and reaffirms it that we don't have to be the ones who do it. That we don't have to be the ones who even take on, you know, the burden of it. That he comforts us through all that. He walks us through all that. And that's the beauty of the gospel, that God takes care of all of our needs and helps us and walks us through it, giving us the wisdom and guidance and letting us lean into him. You see, at the end of the day, a life with Jesus is what I sincerely know that all of us need. I'm smart enough to know that I'm not the, the person who would have been able to make it without the Lord. I know that. And I know that if anyone truly is humble enough to admit it, no one is. We'll be caught up in addictions. 
We'll be caught up in failures, shortcomings, insecurities, bondages. We will be. At the end of the day, we're not good people. But with God, he can make us into something so precious. He could change our life from beauty or from ashes to beauty. He can, he can make such wonderful things out of who we are if we let him. So today, my prayer is that you would give your heart to the Lord, A, or B, that you would let him mold you even more into all he's called us to be. So Father, I thank you for this day. Bless every person who's listening here today to understand that their life is meaning to you, Lord God, something wonderful. Let them see it, understand it, and walk in it now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I'm so glad that you joined me. Until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless you and stay in the Lord. Unleash the power of gospel with Bishop Dan Willis and the All Nations Choir, live from Chicago. Elevate your spirit and let the harmonies of faith resonate in your heart. Order your copy today. Available now on Amazon Music, iTunes, and Spotify. Gospel music is alive and well. Hi, Lighthouse family. Did you know that your Lighthouse has an app? I invite you to go ahead and download it in your app store. You will find all of our fun, exciting events for the year, as well as you're able to rewatch sermons, and there are some daily devotionals. And on top of that, you do get to give. Go ahead and download it on your device today. Welcome to your new home to figure out what's going on at your Lighthouse.